So if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I've got a list of starter kits on my PC Paprika profile, everything from budget gaming to ultimate power. Today, I'm gonna be just diving into these part lists and showing you why I chose the parts that I did. And hopefully that will give you an idea of what you should think about when you're gonna be choosing your PC parts. I will be periodically updating all of these starter kits, trying to keep them updated with the latest pricing information. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. And first off, we'll just start with budget gaming. This is a very interesting price point because the Xbox Series X and the PS5, you can get them for around four to $500 usually, and they perform really well. Like this PC for $600 plus whatever your case is gonna cost is not gonna perform quite as well as something like an Xbox Series X. So for budget gaming, I kind of thought about what's gonna get you really the best bang for buck. I think that's obviously gonna be AM4 platform. AM4 motherboards are super cheap. DDR4 is super cheap. So I've just kind of combined those two with a really good bang for buck CPU, which is the 5600. Also comes with a cooler that you can actually use because the 5600 has been shown to only draw up to 65 watts. Like it actually follows its TDP. Unlike some CPUs nowadays, they'll say they only draw like 100 watts, but then draw like 300 watts during actual peak load. There isn't really a particular reason why I chose this motherboard. At this price point, I'm basically just looking for something that isn't gonna break after like a week. For storage, I just slapped in a random NVMe. Um, every new PC should be using solid state drives of some sort. NVMe ideally, I mean, it's just so cheap now. Like a whole terabyte is only $46. And also it's just a lot cleaner to build with. With a hard drive or with any sort of 3.5 inch that requires a SATA connection, you're gonna have to deal with at least two extra cables to connect power and data transfer. But with an NVMe, you just slot it in the motherboard. Super clean, highly recommend. For the graphics card, 6600 XT, used, $180-ish, maybe around 200. A really great bang for buck. I talked about this in my GPU video, but AMD is gonna be really solid for the 1080p to 1440p range, especially just regular rasterization, like no ray tracing, none of that. Here, here's the <laughs> kind of controversial section. I'm gonna recommend you get a 80 plus gold, 750 watt, fully modular power supply. It's gonna cost you hundred bucks. Now, yes, you can get something that will work perfectly fine. That will only cost like 50 or maybe even $40. But here's the thing, your power supply connects to your entire PC. If that dies, your, P your entire PC might die, right? So. I don't think it's worth running the risk of frying the rest of your PC. Also, if you get one of these kinds of power supplies with like a 10 year warranty, think about how much reuse you can get out of that, right? Like this isn't gonna be the last PC you build, I hope, uh, for the next 10 years. Also fully modular, fantastic, super clean. Just think about it as like a future investment, right? It's going to pay itself off in a sense. That's kind of my budget gaming mindset. Uh, this is a really great starting point. All right, next step up, let's say you wanna throw in a little bit more productivity and you have a bit more cash. Well, for that, the 12600K is gonna be your best bet. It's still gonna be at entry level, so it's still gonna be pretty good bang for your buck. 12600K has really great multi-core performance uh, and it's gonna be great for your productivity. Now we are going to have to get a third-party cooler. The Thermorite Assassin is really gonna be best bang for your buck. Like, yes, it's only $18, it's kind of sketchy, but from what I've seen in terms of the uh, online reviews as well as testing from a lot of different YouTubers, it performs pretty well and will definitely be able to handle a 12600K. Z690 PG motherboard is a pretty standard motherboard. It is pretty budget friendly, I would say, and has a lot of the sort of productivity minded features. It's got a good amount of NVMe slots, a lot of PCIe connectivity. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, however, so I have had to add a $23 uh, Wi-Fi adapter. And since DDR4 is just a lot cheaper now, just gone with the base kit we started from earlier. Since this is gonna be targeted more for productivity, you can bump it up to 32 gigabytes, but I feel like for this entry-level mixed use, probably won't need that much. I did bump up the NVMe drive to a PCIe 4. Made a minor correction here. I'm gonna be replacing the SSD with the Crucial P3 Plus basically because it performs the same and it's a lot cheaper. So just a little edit there. And then we bumped up to a 2080 Super, which you can get for around $200 on the used market. Pretty great value there, especially if you're looking just for raw computational performance. And then, as I mentioned before, we are going to be using a pretty solid power supply that 
hopefully is going to last us for at least the next 10 years. But let's say you want to spend a little more and uh, you want to focus a little bit more on gaming. We're going to be flipping back to AMD here with the Ryzen 5 7600. We won't be able to use the included CPU cooler here because it turns out that the 7600 will exceed its rated TDP of 65 watts when it tries to push to its peak performance. We are going to have to slap on that $18 cooler here, but I feel like it's a uh, not a huge uh, hit to the price and it's still gonna be better value than the 7600X. We've gone with a B650M Pro RS Wi-Fi motherboard. That's going to be a pretty solid option for this price point. And we've also gone with a DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. This is basically gonna be the kit that I'm gonna be using for pretty much all the other starter kits from this price point upwards. Mostly because 6000 CL30 has been shown to be kind of like the sweet spot at the moment. We are sticking with a PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive. For the graphics card, we are gonna go with a new 6700 XT. Now you can go used and that'll bring your budget down, but I just kind of pick new here because the difference between new and used is not substantial. The difference is like 260 versus 300-ish dollars. Now the 6700 XT is pretty neat because it is one of the rare mid-range graphics cards that has a pretty nice VRAM capacity at 12 gigabytes. And as you might know, games are gonna be eating up more and more VRAM nowadays. And so having just 12 gigabytes is uh, definitely great to give you that extra breathing room. And then we've kept the same power supply as with before. So a thousand bucks, gonna be pretty solid 1440p. Maybe you can squeeze some 4K gaming out of it as well with the upscaling technologies. Overall gonna be really solid for entry to mid-level gaming performance. Now shifting back over to more of a productivity focused build, we're gonna go with the 12700K. It's just gonna be a slight bump up from the 12600K in terms of single core performance, but it is a lot stronger in multi-core performance. But because of its extra power draw, we are gonna have to bump up the $18 cooler to a $34 cooler, oh no. Yes, it's only a $30 cooler, but as I said, I've looked at the testing data from a lot of reviews and this is gonna be basically best bang for buck, high-end, high power draw CPU cooler. Pretty much everything else is kind of the same with the previous build. We're using DDR5 memory, we're using PCIe4 solid state NVMe. We are gonna be updating the GPU to a 3080, but we're gonna be going back to used pricing. This is a really great starting point for solid gaming performance and productivity performance at an entry to mid-range price point. Okay, now solidly in the mid-tier, we have the 13600K. The cool thing about this CPU is that it performs almost as well in multi-core performance as an i9-12900K. Really great CPU at $270. We are gonna have to pair it with a pretty beefy air cooler here, so I've included the same one uh, from the previous build. We are also gonna go with a Z790 motherboard. That's going to allow us to plop the CPU right in without needing to update the BIOS, which can be kind of a hassle. Uh, we've kept the same DDR5 kit as before, as well as the NVMe SSD. Uh, and this time we've gone with a 3080 Ti, which you can currently get for just around $550 uh, used. So pretty great deal there. And it's gonna give you really solid uh, productivity performance, as well as gaming performance, especially with that 12 gigabyte VRAM capacity. I just realized that this build is gonna be drawing 650 watts. So I've bumped up the power supply to 850 watts. Regardless, it's still gonna be a gold certified, fully modular power supply. But let's say you don't wanna use your PC as your winter heater, and you actually do care about power usage somewhat, but you still want to get pretty decent all around performance. You probably wanna go with the Ryzen 9 7900. Yes, it's gonna fetch you a heftier price than the 13600K, but for the performance you're getting from it, and as well as the much lower peak power draw, I think it's totally worth it if you're maybe living in a pretty warm environment. But yeah, the 7900 is super efficient. Uh, we can just use actually the basic $18 uh, air cooler for this. Gamers Nexus tested the peak power draw only at 86 watts, which is really impressive given that it is a 12 core uh, CPU that can uh, deliver pretty great multi-core performance. But everything else is pretty much the same as before. We have you know your DDR5 kit, Wi-Fi motherboard, 
PCIe 4 NVMe drive. We are gonna be using a 4070. Now I think this is actually the first build in my list of starter kits where we're using a current gen GPU. And that is simply because the 4070 is so power efficient. Let, let me just show you this. It is drawing less than half of the wattage of a 4090 while having more than half of its computational performance. If we look at the total power draw of this thing, it's only gonna be 374 watts. Just as a comparison, let's take a look at the mid-range. And this is already drawing 650 watts. And the performance difference between these is not big at all. So you're drawing almost half of the wattage, but do keep in mind, this is gonna cost a bit more. Is it worth it? I would think so. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be your solid mid-range efficiency focused build. Now, if you want even more performance while still maintaining pretty good power efficiency, then I'm gonna be recommending the 7900X3D, really high up there in terms of gaming performance. And then we're just gonna bump up a 4070 to the 4070 Ti. It's not quite as power efficient in terms of just raw, you know, compute per watt, um, but it's still gonna be quite power efficient for the amount of computational performance. It is going to match the 3090 Ti in terms of raw compu performance while drawing like 150 less watts. So really great combination. We can keep the basic $18 air cooler for our $500 CPU. We're gonna keep the same DDR5 kit, PCIe 4 SSD. For this build as well, we are sticking with the 750 watt power supply. Uh, no need to go any higher just because we are not drawing that much power. Now we're gonna get into our first ultimate starter kit and that's going to be the ultimate gaming build with the 7800X 3D. And I'm gonna be pairing this with the 7900X TX. These two parts, this CPU GPU combo is gonna be just the best gaming performance you can get in terms of pure rasterization at 1080p and 1440p, like if you wanna just push maximum frames. There's gonna be no difference between these GPUs in terms of rasterization performance at 1080p and 1440p, so you should really only go with the 4090 if you are either running ray tracing all the time, if you are on 4K, or you're a whale. We've kept the same DDR5 kit and PCIe 4 SSD from before. I don't think it's necessary to increase any of these. So we're gonna be using the 850 watt power supply for this build just to give us a little bit more breathing room. Pushing the budget past $2,000, uh, we're gonna be heading into our upper productivity starter kit. This time we're gonna go with the 13700K paired with the 4080. The only reason why I kind of chose these two is just because they're one step down from the ultimate top end, right? Like it's one step down from the i9, one step down from the 4090. Um, so it's kind of like, you don't want to go for, you know, you don't want to go off the deep end, but you still want really high end performance. This is the starter kit for you. Uh, we've kept the 850 watt power supply, uh, but you should probably maybe consider a 1000 watt at this point if you bump up any of these components. For the next build, we're going to be looking at the ultimate efficiency, not that it's the most efficient, but that it's going to give you the most performance while still sort of keeping efficiency in mind. That's gonna be the 7950X 3D. This is AMD's sort of top of the line 3D Vcash chip. It's gonna have really great gaming performance and multi-core performance. It's gonna be pretty power efficient. It's still gonna probably need the beefier $30 tower cooler instead of the $18 tower cooler. The testing shows it to draw 156 watts. Same DDR5 kit, same SSD kit. We have kept the 4080. It is gonna be pretty decently power efficient. You could always go off the deep end and replace this with the 4090, but I've just kept the 4080 here to keep the cost relatively in control. The final category, if you want just the ultimate power, you want a space heater for the winter, this is the starter kit for you. We've got the 13900K paired with a 4090. Now you might be wondering, why didn't you go with the 14900K? Well, funnily enough, the 14900K actually does have a slightly lower peak power draw. So I just, and they both perform the same. So if you really want that, you know, extra warmth in your room, go with the 13900K. It also costs a little bit less than the 14th gen. We did bump up to a 1000 watt power supply because our estimated wattage is exceeding 800 watts. So you're gonna need a thousand watt power supply. But we have kept the same DDR5 kit and a SSD kit. Now you might be wondering, there's no way this $30 cooler can keep an i9 at bay, right? Well, surprisingly it can. 
the testing and reviews that I have seen were actually all done with the 13900K and it was able to keep it at a pretty respectable temperature for $34. It, you can't really beat that. If it gives you better peace of mind, feel free to swap out for a beefier air cooler or liquid cooling. But for all intents and purposes, as long as your case has decent airflow, this is gonna be enough. I hope that helps. The part lists are gonna be linked in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm gonna be periodically updating these as pricing changes. As always, thanks for watching.